start with by uh, quoting one of the <coughs> professors or Dr. Amartya Sen in his book of Idea of Justice, he said that uh, the true justice uh, can be delivered. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, is there are three things which you look into. One is niyat, niti. It is only with the niyat and the niti, the nyaya is delivered. Okay. I'm not quoting just to say that I understand everything what Amartya Sen writes. Uh, I understand little, but this caught my attention. Um, niyat is intention. So, niti is the codes. It's only with the intention and the right codes, standards, and processes, it's possible to deliver justice to the society. So, it's, it's important that both the niyat and the niti are present to deliver that justice. I think I'll start from that and then talk about, because I was briefed in terms of what's a consultant's viewpoint in terms of India's uh, growth in terms of sustainability. And I, as he rightly said, stakeholders are important. So I'll take a couple of stakeholders to demonstrate this particular thing. If I take the industry, for example, uh, with whom I work mostly with, uh, comprehension of these things is very important. Almost about uh, a year and a half back, I read a news which said that the first dengue was detected in Japan. Now, it was not because somebody traveled with dengue, but homegrown. Now, what does it tell? One, climate change, because vectors do not populate in such cold areas. So, you are, as the climate is getting warmer, the mosquitoes are moving up. One, if I was in the healthy healthcare industry, I would be jumping with joy. If I was in the insurance industry, the other way around. Now look at it, the comprehension of what is happening around is very important for the private sector to work on it. China is building, of course, there is a reference to China, so I'm taking an example there. China is working huge on R&D, on navigation through thin ice, ship skulls, um, uh, um, all kinds of designs they are trying to navigate through thin ice. Why? Arctic is going to be navigable in a decade's time during summers. Now think about the whole of the transportation chain, change which would happen. Now some of these things which are happening around you, that comprehension is vital for the private sector to work on. The second thing is offsets don't work. If I'm building some uh, an industry and saying that, okay, uh, there are some uh, environmental effects, but I'm creating jobs. Uh, no, guys, I mean, these offsets don't work. And that's where the externalities, which right from the morning you have been hearing. Let me try to simplify what is an externality. A simple factory which comes on the banks of a river, which takes water in, uses it for its production, lets the water out. Now, the quality of the water which comes out is not the same as the quality of the water which goes in although you meet all regulatory requirements. It's not the same. A fisherman down the line, he earlier used to collect about 10 fishes. Now his catch is reduced to eight. Now the economic loss which happens to him, it now reflects on the book of accounts of this particular company, and that's an externality, okay? Now how does an externality impact you? The fishermen, if there are a group of fishermen, they come and start agitation in front of your factory, saying that it's because of you, he is losing it. Now, definitely, the, uh, uh, the public movement or the social movement catches up. The pollution control board comes in. They say, for you, we are changing the norms. You have to now, the, the, the water treatment has to be more stringent, and the quality of the things which are going out has to be reduced. Now, this is how an externality is pushed to be internalized inside a company. And in India, what you are going to see is, because of the social pressure, because of the environmental changes, more and more of these externalities are going to be pushed to be internalized. What you heard from 2% of CSR spending, right from any project which is coming, which is required to 5% of their total investment to go into social causes, you, uh, you know, the, the coal cess taxes, all these things are nothing but pushing those externalities internal. It's going to happen. Water is going to be the next biggest externality, which is going to be pushed to be, in, uh, uh, which is to be, uh, which is to be internalized by the organizations. 
So I think offsets won't work. Even even if you say that, you know, I'm creating something else for something else. No, that's not going to uh, save you in the future. So these are the two critical things which I wanted to talk about the industry. Now coming to the governments or the uh, administration. Again, the first thing which I have to tell you is comprehension is vital. World over, when we are talking about a 1.5 degree, I don't think that would happen. Two degree, even that I doubt. Um, but whatever it is, two degree rise in temperature, do we really know in India, that's an average two degree, okay, across the world. That would mean in India, what are we talking about? We are going to talk about nearly about a four degree to somewhere around five degree rise in temperature. That's huge. Do we really know what's the kind of adaptation which we need to do because of this change in climate which is happening? Do we really know how agricultural practices are going to change? Do we really know what is going to happen for the food security? Guys, until unless you start comprehending about it, you really can't drive policies. How many of the people in the government have started realizing this is going to be the impact? The second thing about the government, we bring out regulations, best regulations across the world. It's easy, but then how well we implement it. The weakest link in India when we talk about is the implementation. Municipal solid waste management and handling rules has been there for how many years? And look at the problem what Bangalore faces even today. E-waste management and handling rules, how many years it has been? The end of the life, every cell phone, every electronic goods which you use today, the end of the life, the responsibility lies with the manufacturer, or the producer of that particular equipment. Is anybody taking care of it? Where is the implementation happening? The third thing which I would say is the policy making itself. How much consultation happens? Take the case of Delhi. Diesel cars, suddenly one day some banned diesel cars. Guys, I mean, across the world it is happening. Banning of diesel vehicles is happening. Paris is going to ban by 2020. I'm, again, don't take it from the West, but still I have to say this. Uh, Paris is banning from 2020, but there is a proper consultation which is happening, a planned manner. UK, in 11 cities, there is a plan to ban diesel vehicles. They have put out a paper for consultation now, and consultations are going on, and people are taking that kind of view and then deciding on the future course of action. You can't just say that from tomorrow, no diesel cars allowed. Do you know what happened in Delhi? All those taxi drivers who put their hard-earned money to buy a vehicle to run those Olas and Ubers, what is going to happen? His car would not even fetch a decent resale money because nobody is going to buy that diesel vehicle. And diesel vehicles cannot get converted to CNG. Yeah? So it's, it's, it's critical when you're making those policies, the consultations with the industries, with the right stakeholders is going to be some of the critical areas which we lack currently. So two key players, the industry and the government is the two things which I wanted to look into. And I, since I am at I am Bangalore, I would say that, guys, academia has a big role here. When we are talking about science-based change, where is that science in India? I mean, you put out the, the science, then people can take that decisions. I think the, the, the integration of the academia with the governments, with the industry, we have a long way to go. Um, and, and, and I think I will stop by that. Thank you.